Hi y'all, it's Dr. A, and I want to explain to you the sociological imagination or what I think of as how personal problems are really public issues or how the personal is sociological. I think that C. Wright Mills is one of the most important thinkers of the, the modern century. He's the one who came up with the idea of the sociological imagination. And you can see him here eating in, in a cafe. This is probably sometime in the, the early 1960s. Uh, and you'll see later on in, the, uh, in this video about why I chose this particular photograph of him eating in a, uh, in a local cafe. So the, the power of the sociological imagination is that it reveals, first of all, it reveals the structure of society and especially how inequalities work. So how inequality is based on race, on gender, on social class, that those are the structures of society that shape our experiences in society. So it reveals the structure of society and this is a very powerful thing. Also, the sociological imagination transforms our thinking about social problems and about personal problems. So whereas it looks like it might look like a person is unemployed because they're mentally ill or they're crazy or they're stupid or they're uneducated or have other kinds of personal problems, but oftentimes unemployment, especially structural unemployment, is actually not the fault of the individual at all. And so it can transform the sociological imagination, transforms our thinking about the causes of of unemployment and other other social issues that are felt personally, but are not the, the responsibility of the individuals who are involved. So the, the sociological imagination frees us from blaming other people or even ourselves for, for problems that have the social causes, social roots, uh, and we can no longer have to blame ourselves or others for personal failings. And then again, it lets us understand how we as individuals fit into our society. And this is another very, very powerful tool that, that students of sociology can use to be able to understand themselves and how they fit into to history. So let's, let's play a little mind game. Let's pretend that there's this town called Widgetville. And it's called Widgetville because there's the Widget Manufacturing Company that is the heart of the town. So almost everyone works at the, the Widget Manufacturing Company. Either they work there or they're, they have a family member who works there. And the Widget Manufacturing Company is a thriving local business. Uh, people uh, enjoy working there. Uh, you can see here on the, the photograph that they put safety first. It's a nice place to work. People like, like working at Widget Manufacturing Company, and they like living in Widgetville. So because people have jobs at the M Widget Manufacturing Company, then there's all kinds of spinoff uh, stores and industries that also thrive in Widgetville. So here's, for instance, we can imagine that this is the, the cafe that's near uh, the Widget Manufacturing Company, and the workers uh, eat at the, the cafe. They bring their families to eat at the cafe. And because there's this cafe that is, is thriving because of the widget manufacturing company, then the people who work at the, the cafe, who work at the restaurant, also make a good living. So you see in the background here, uh, the waitress, uh, the cooks and the dishwashers, everyone benefits from the widget manufacturing company's success in Widgetville because they also can participate in the local economy. So they, the widget manufacturing people, they shop in the local stores. So the florist companies uh, benefit from widget manufacturing. Uh, the grocery stores, card companies, uh, clothing stores, everybody in the entire Widgetville benefits from widget manufacturing company. They go and they buy cars, new cars, they buy homes in Widgetville, they can make their mortgage payments, they can pay their car insurance, they buy uh, tires, they buy iPads, they buy phones, they send their kids to college, all because Widget Manufacturing Company is a stable employer in Widgetville. So let's then imagine that the widget manufacturing company moved offshore that maybe they found that the uh, price of supplies in another country were cheaper or maybe they found that the labor is cheaper in, in another country 
So this is happening increasingly and entire communities are being abandoned as a result of this. So the widget manufacturing company moved offshore, which meant that the widget manufacturing company in Widgetville closed down shop, which means that the people who worked at, who were formerly workers at widget manufacturing company are now out of a job and they are out of money. So the first thing that people typically cut back on when they lose their job is they typically stop eating out. So here you have the local cafe and it's, it's empty. Uh, when it's empty like this, this means also that uh, the, the workers are also gonna lose their jobs. The workers at this particular store, the waitress is gonna lose her job at the, the local cafe, the tire, salesman is, is going to lose his job um, and the property is going to be abandoned. So here we've got, you know, a cafe that's been abandoned on, this is actually from Route 66, which uh, is, is kind of a graveyard of abandoned cafes and abandoned businesses. Uh, people are going to lose their homes. Their homes are going to be foreclosed upon because they can't make the, the mortgage payments. Uh, entire neighborhoods will be abandoned. So this is actually one of the more heartbreaking photographs of the uh, Detroit, when the automobile industry uh, just came to a screeching halt in Detroit and, and uh, people couldn't pay their mortgages and just abandon their homes. And this, this kind of photograph just makes me very, very sad. Um, so here's how you can apply the sociological imagination. So you think about these questions. Why are the widget ink people out of work? Is it because they're stupid, uneducated, or uh, can't have the skills, don't have the skills to do the work. No, they, they're out of work because the widget manufacturing company moved offshore. So they became unemployed. This is called structural unemployment when large groups of people, large classes of people lose their jobs. So why did the waitress at the cafe lose her job? Was it because she was uneducated or, or was late to work or came in drunk or something like that? You know, it's not likely. It's most more likely that the waitress and the other workers at the cafe lost their jobs because the widget ink company, the, the widget manufacturing company closed and those workers could no longer afford to eat at the cafe. So the cafe had to go out of business and people at the cafe lost their jobs. Well, why did the local retail store close? Is it because they didn't have the products that people wanted to buy? No, it's because there weren't any consumers who had any money left to be able to, to go to the local store. It's very likely that well, most of the consumers, most of the people in Widgetville actually moved out of town. They abandoned their homes and moved out of town to find other employment opportunities. So why did the Johnson family lose, lose their home? They lost their home because they were part of this, this downfall that was caused uh, in the local economy, this, this kind of ripple effect that was caused by the widget manufacturing company moving offshore. So if we look at the sociological imagination and we look at these, these questions, we can see that it's social issues, the structural unemployment that caused people to become unemployed and then to experience all the negative effects of unemployment, which includes losing your, your home, maybe becoming homeless, uh, to have bad credit because you don't have enough money in the bank because to, to pay your bills, uh, you know, you get behind your credit card bills, uh, you might have to go into bankruptcy. Uh, all this, these unemployment is shown to cause uh, extreme emotional distress. People become depressed. They might turn to uh, drugs or alcohol or, or other um, uh, addictions in order to cope with, with depression. Um, and so it's, it's all these, these things that we feel very personal and it's a very much a personal experience being un, unemployed is a personal experience. But I'm hoping that you can see through this example how it's not individual's fault that they become unemployed in the case of the structural unemployment. It's actually a social issue. Well, I'm Dr. A and I hope that you found this interesting and useful. Bye.